five minute romp through the image processor. Uh, the function is not, uh, not to explain it carefully enough so one would be able to walk up to it and use it. There'll be lots of details ignored. But by explaining it to some degree of detail to give um, a concept of how it works. First of all, it's it, uh, a, compact of, a compact way of saying what it is, is to say that it is a general purpose analog computer, a general purpose patch programmable, meaning programmed by patch cables, analog computer, analog to distinguish it from what is normally called a computer, which is a digital computer, which is the kind of thing that does your bills and payrolls and um, does information storing and retrieval and stuff like that. This is another breed of computer entirely called an analog computer. And um, it's optimized. What makes it different than most uh, general purpose analog computers is that this one is optimized for processing uh, video information, for processing television information, although it also can process sound or any other signal uh, within some restrictions. For instance, the comparator, which is this unit here, I'm now running a signal from the camera input into the comparator and then into this output module. And if I switch to the process signal, you see something like a codolith turned all black and white, except that I can very easily adjust the gray level at which that transition is made. Now that's one primitive processing step. Another primitive processing step is the uh, function generator, which I will transfer to now. And with that, you see I can adjust uh, the continuous transfer gray levels. There's the white area, middle gray area, and black area, and produce effects that are like solarization, but somewhat more complicated. The uh, value scrambler, which is this module here, I'm patching in here and out here, and I'll turn to that process. What that does is divide the value region up into uh, eight separate value regions and I have independent control out of each one of those value regions. So I'm going down now and adjusting them from white to black or playing with them from white to black. Uh, this module, like other modules, uh, the knobs also can be done by control voltage, which allows for a more complex interaction. There are several other modules which I'm going to skip over very quickly, one of which is the adder multiplier, and this allows for very simple combinations of images. For instance, I can use it, for instance, to fade from one image to another. But because these are also voltage controllable, I can have that function performed by a control voltage, which presently is being generated up here by an oscillator. And I can vary the frequency that that kind of thing happens. I also can generate uh, standard special effects, as I call them, like this is, for instance, a key. Um, and they all can be generated with the, this adder multiplier, which is kind of a ubiquitous utility module that allows com combining signals in both simple and complex ways. Turn your sets to color now. Of uh, More snapshots, more or less, of what I've been up to with the color IP uh, since the color IP was finished, uh, if it's finished, and since it was finished in color, since the color modules were added at the end of the summer. Uh, they're mostly little snapshots, uh, kind of ex uh, extractions of experiments. I haven't yet gotten, uh, had an excuse or wanted to put together a, kind of complete entity.